Hi guys, welcome back to Rebuilding Histon. As you can see, we're now into the month of November. We've got our home match against Bedford, who are currently second and three points ahead of us in the league right now. Let's, let's, let's actually have a quick look and tell you what happened the last time you were with us, which was all the way back at this home match against Hanwell. As you can see from the uh, overall uh, fixture list, we've had a really positive start since then, but then we've kind of hit like a slump for the, last, for the last three matches. So let's start at the beginning with a 3-2 win in the FA Trophy preliminary round against AFC Totten. Um, this is quite an um, interesting game on our hands. We did concede strike early on with Dan Mund by, by Dan Mundane, but then Glider and two goals from Perry ensured that we get to the next round of the competition. As you can see, we dominated in terms of the stats on the shots and on target. Yes, we had more, oh, we had less fouls as well. Yes, we had more yellow cards, but in the end, that was enough for us to get through. Dave Allen getting a uh, consolation goal in the 91st minute in injury time for Totten, but that wasn't enough to inspire them to come back into the game. We then moved on to, to another 3-2 match, this time in the league against Egham, who were actually on a bit of good form recently prior to this match. As you can see, they took the lead and took, took a two-goal lead by the 20th minute from Romain, two goals from Romain Walker. Tom Perry then answered back with two goals in the space of two minutes. And then Matt, a Matt Murphy penalty in the 60th minute that turned out to be the winning goal and earned us another three points in the league itself. Unfortunately, Murphy got, did get injured in this particular game, but he is now back fully fit a bit later on in the... Uh, was a bit later on in that particular month. We then went away to Petersfield and won 2-0. A goal from Glider and Perry. Not many, not many, on, not many chances for us on our side. But Petersfield, I think, were in a little bit of form prior to this game, but we were able to get another good three points away from home and continue our little good run of form. I think that actually made us put us top of the league at the end of that game. We then moved on into a uh, home match against Olesley, and I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, apologies from apologies for that. Olesley, Olesley. Orsley, I'll say Orsley. Um, so Ryan Williams put the put us in front after one after 52 minutes. Unfortunately for us, uh, I think Tom Perry did get injured uh, prior to this game. Uh, I think on the training pitch, either on the training pitch or during the match. But I don't think it was during the match because, as you can see, he was actually playing pre in the previous game, but wasn't injured in that. But then Michael Ogilvy managed to get a goal back, and that resulted in a draw between us two. So that was off. First drop points in a while. Oh, first draw since um, the game against AFC Kempston all the way back in September. We then had a game against St Ives in the uh, Southern League Cup second round, which we actually managed to win it 3-2 in the end. As you can see, they took the lead through Ashley Mo Ashley Mulholland, and then Ben Seymour shove made it 2-0. It looked as if we we're going to be heading out, but then glided with two goals. Oh, and Labros Michalidis in the middle of those two goals ensured that we then advanced into the next round of the Southern League Cup and actually met the board's expectations on this particular cup competition as well. So that was amazing. Unfortunately, though, things started to turn after this away match against Coville, which was in the FA Trophy first qualifier round. This team was actually in the tier above us, but unfortunately, they seem to have just a little bit more um, edge belt. And yes, they had a penalty missed in the eighth minute, then Glider scored after 15 minutes, and we thought, mm, maybe we've got a chance here. But then two minutes later, Carl Demid made it 1-0, uh, and then Sami El Sami made it 2-1 to Koval. And overall, based on the stats, it looks like, apart from possession, it looks like they deserve to win that game in the end. It not, it's not too bad that we've been knocked out the first qualifying round. We weren't even expected to get past the first or the preliminary stage. So to get a little bit money of money and get through to that next round was, also, was always a bonus. We then suffered our first league defeat since the Farnborough game, all the way back in early September. A 2-1 defeat to Chalfont St. Peter, which was actually a really disappointing result in the end. Yeah, this is where we ended up picking up quite a, few, a couple of injuries, which has really left us toothless up front. As you can see, Glider went off with an injury, and, and Ryan Williams then had an injury towards the end of the game. As you can see, Glider did... Met, oh, Michael Reeve made it 1-0 to St. Pete, Chalfont St. Peter. We then equalised in the 26th minute, but then Jamie Brand in the 55th minute made it 2-1, and by the time he'd scored, we then had our injuries then kept caught up with us with the two strikers having to come off, and we kind of didn't end up being toothless up front. As you can see, 11 shots, 3 on target, not very clinical when it came to being in front of goal, so that was a really disappointing result 
in the end, considering Charlton and St. Peter aren't that doing that well in the league. We then lost 1-0 in the Southern League Cup third round against Michael against um, Bridgewater, who are in the uh, same tier as us, but on the opposite side, so the Southern League South and West, First Division South and West. And Michael Bending was the scored the only goal of the game. And as you can see, we had 19 shots, 10 on target, so it looks like we had a chance of winning this game. But unfortunately, because of the fact that we had no strikers up front, we had lost all our strikers due to injury, Labros Mikalidis had to play up front. And we just were too completely toothless. And then Callum Frew, who's been a revelation since he's um, started a couple of games recently, he has now picked up an injury as well. So he's now out for a couple of weeks. So it's not really been going well in terms of the overall attacking prowess for us. And that's actually kind of affected our league form. Yes, we are currently still sitting in the playoff spots. But as you can see, it's really tight between ourselves in third and all the way to seventh with it where AFC Kempston are two points between third, separating third and seventh. And as you can see, Farnborough have come off and gone off the ball in terms of their actual form, which is why Bedford are only two points behind them. Who are, and as as I mentioned before, we're actually playing Bedford in this next game, and they've actually got the uh, the league's top goal scorer in Lee Roach. So we're going to have to um, ensure that our defence is up to scratch in this particular match. Um, let's actually go to the uh, game itself. Actually, no, there's there was something else I wanted to mention as well. In terms of transfers, there was a um, one transfer that happened. That was actually someone that we decided to let go on a free transfer. And that was Luke Reed. He wasn't going to get any game time for us. So I thought, why not cut our losses and actually release or mutually terminate his contract? And that saves us a little bit of money a bit later on down the line. Um, so let's actually go into the um, game itself. I probably have to uh, figure out what's the best tactic to play against... Um, of Bedford here today. It's probably going to be a really tough game for us up front considering the fact we've got absolutely no injury. Yes, you can see Ryan Williams is still not back. He says he's returning to full fitness in one day, but to be honest, I don't really want to risk him. And as you can see there, Perry is out for another 5 to 11 days and Glide is out for another 3 to 4 weeks. So hopefully we can get one striker fit and then play this 4 5 1 system, which is what I was actually playing when. Glider went down, but then since Williams went down, we had to really uh, improvise as who's been up front. So um, we're going to have to decide who is the best when it comes to this. I'm going to take him off actually because I don't really want to uh, uh, aggravate his injury. So we're not going to put Max York up front, obviously. Um, going to give Mikalidis another go at uh, attack, or maybe put him actually at attack midfielder. And we're going to put uh, Soakland maybe? Or maybe put Soakland on the left and May up front. I mean, we could probably have to uh, move his position around a little bit. Um, can we have two attacking midfielders? That could work. Yes, we're playing with no strikers, but that's just something we have to uh, deal with at the moment. Maybe we have to be a little bit more defensive-minded, particularly in this particular game, considering the, the team that we're playing. Um, I'm actually going to go for that. Let's see how this works. I mean, it's completely unorthodox formation, and the players are probably like, "What the hell? We're not playing. We're not playing a striker up front." But we just need to get something going with this particular game. If we can score with any of these guys, it'll be absolutely fantastic. Even a draw, I think I'll take for this particular match. Um, just fix the substitutes actually, because I don't really want all defenders on the uh, pitch here. Um, let's go for let's go for Richie Stanard into the backfield. I'm going to go for that, and let's see how this works. I mean, I've not tried this sort of thing before in Football Manager, where I've not played a single striker. Never really had that problem before, so it's going to be interesting to say the least. Um, we've got Roach, obviously, who's the main man, as we've mentioned before. We've got Watkins, and I don't know how to pronounce that name. I'm sorry. Uh, they're attacking mid right midfielder. So we're going to actually uh, apply all advice to the team. I'm going to close these guys down. Tight marking on Lee Roach all the time. Make sure he doesn't get any sort of opportunity. So I'm going to show them all onto weaker foot, as we always do. We now need to get some uh, passionate thing going here and get them uh, back into a little bit form. As you can see, the morale's gone a little bit down. That's mainly because of our little losing streak here. Um... Let's go for that. Fingers crossed. And we're going to have to motivate this team to try and get them uh, going here. Um, right, okay. Got no, got no strikers, so we don't have to do that. And let's kick off the game. 
and let's see how well we can do against second place in the league. We didn't do very well against first place against Farnborough, as I mentioned before, but let's see how well we can do against second place. Right, I've got a highlight here for, uh, I think, Bedford. Sherlock, who hoofs it forward? Yeah, that's his name, Sherlock. Michaelidis, up to, back to Carilio. I might actually change the uh, highlight packages to, uh, or not extend the highlights to try and uh, reduce the, uh, the length on these videos here. Uh, highlights, I might go for key. Go for key highlights and see what happens there. See if that reduces the amount of time on these uh, actual uh, videos and highlights because they have been a little bit long as Roach tries to get forward. He's been he's won the ball off the defender, but he shoots straight at Conwaro and that was a good chance there for uh, Bedford to take the lead in the game. Um, nothing much happening so far as we head towards the uh, 15 minute mark. Barton Rovers are one up against Hanwell and they're not too far behind us. Uh, they've now gone ahead of us, as you can see. We need to change something, I think. Let's go attacking and see what happens here. Um, the game's going a lot faster than what it was in previous uh, matches. That's mainly because I think because I've got key highlights on. Uh, a couple more scores are coming into play here. Ingram heads it up towards May. Austin then loop, puts a long ball towards uh, Roach again. Here's Hadrell, Mackenzie Lowe. Hadrell. There's a lot of uh, double barrel names, I think, I've, from what I've noticed in the um, some of the other teams here. As May's on the ball. Here's Reed on the right hand side. Puts the ball towards May, but Sherlock is able to s discover and f and snuff that out. Here is Watkins, and he's just got a lot of space behind Chris Watts here. He's taken a shot and he's put it wide. So that was a good that was a good opportunity there for him. Um, but if we've had two shots, one on target, and looks like it wasn't really much of a good shot considering the fact that it's not a highlight as it looks like we're heading towards half time we've got a free kick oh corner here Reed puts it in his back towards Michaelidis here's Watts please do not lose the ball from this position here's Harding back to Watts up to May might lose the ball here Murphan Mackenzie Lowe's actually gone into the back of Murphan so it looks like we're gonna have a free kick um, is that a yellow card I think Yep, it's the yellow card for Jamel, Jamal Mackenzie Lowe. It's a free kick which May will take in towards it. It's Reed and he scored. It's 1 0. Histon here. It's Steve Reed with his first goal of the season, and that's exactly what we need. One of these guys needs to step up, considering the fact that all our strikers are really um, taking all the goals right now. We need some more input from the midfielders here. We've only got, I think, three or four or five goals at the moment. Compared with what the goals that Glider and Perry and also Williams has now been scoring since he, since they were both they were all injured, so it's good that someone has managed to step up here and get their first goal of the season. As you can see, that's moved us up to second place, and we'll carry on with this whilst the highlights loading. May with the free kick in towards um, Harding, I think, and then Reed just hits it first time into the bottom right corner. It's a great goal, great strike from Reed, and we are one nil in front here. We've got a highlight here towards the end of the game for uh, Bedford. Let's please don't concede before half time. I don't really want to uh, allow that. Here's Roach though. He's gone past and it's a penalty I think. The game's frozen. Yes it's a penalty. Great. Well done guys. Why did you give the ball away so easily? There. Harding gets a yellow card. But yeah. That's the least of our troubles. Looks like we're going to be coming into the uh, break here at, at one all and it's uh, Watkins that takes the penalty and he scores it into the right hand corner of the net and it's Adam Watkins with his third goal of the season and it's now one all just as we're about to score just as, as we're about to um, go in for half time it's a really poor time to concede a goal I'd like to have been uh, one nil up but we're gonna have to do a little bit of motivation and have to do all that work again here so um, we're going to go for that, I think, to try and get some motivation and get them out of the uh, slump that the team must be in after conceding that goal. Uh, yep, that seems happy. It seems ha everyone seems happy. We're going to go back on attacking, I think, because we need to uh, have a little bit of risk in order for us to get a re to get a reward. If we uh, pardon, if you pardon the pun, there. Here's May, and it's actually gone straight to the um, skipping along the game here. We might end up bringing on a substitution in a minute um, about the hour mark I'm thinking of going at Luke Harding apparently is struggling so I might take him off actually towards the end or towards that 60 minute maybe that's the person we need to bring on 
bring off. He's, he is on a 6.0, so that's mainly because he conceded the penalty. Uh, let's actually do that now. So I don't really want to have him uh, concede anymore. Let's actually put Reese Norton on. He's actually played a couple of matches now from the uh, under... I uh, promoted him from the under-18, so I thought, why not uh, give him a little run out? He seems to be a pretty good player based on his star rating, so I'll show you him, show you him after the uh, match itself. Uh, we're in the 65th minute now. Here's Hawks. Headed away by uh, Reed Hawks again to head it to in towards Roach. Here's Michaelidis, attacking midfielder. Um, Hyams won it back though. Michaelidis back to Hyam. May out to the wide to Reed. Could get past Hawks, but he's just lost the ball there. And here's Watkins up towards Roach. Please get that before there. There and sorry, I can't speak there. Norton managed to get ahead of Roach. That was all I was meant to say. Ball over the top towards Michaelidis. Here chance. Could he score? But it's straight around. He takes a second shot and it's gone. To, into the side netting. Possible half chance there, I think, that we had in the end. We're actually going to bring on another player, I think. Yes, these look like um, defensive substitutions, but we haven't really got anybody else to bring on which who is, um, oh yeah, who can be attacking. Yes, Richie Stanard maybe, but I think I'm using him more of a, as a uh, defensive midfielder and deep-lying playmaker rather than a uh, attacking, pro attacking option. We actually might take Michaelidis off towards the end of this game because he's not having a good, the greatest of games either. Um, but I'm actually happy if we do come out of this game with a draw considering our situation with the fact that we've got no strikers. Um, let me think about this. Switch um, switch those two around. I'm going to bring on Richie Stannard, I think, for Michaelidis. Please be a... Uh, no, actually, we're not going to do that. Actually, yes, we are going to do that because he's had a poor game. Please work. Hopefully, something something work, please. And we somehow sn do a smash and grab and get get the win out of this. Um, please, something work. I'm going to go on overload because I don't know. I want to. I'm. I'm try I'm going to go for it at home, particularly. Yes, it'll be on me if we do end up losing this game, but we need to try something here. As we head in towards the last three minutes, please don't tell me it's a highlight for them. Uh, here's May. Please put the ball towards Murphy. He's got a bit of space to work with, and he's put the ball out towards Reed, who's got a bit of space to cross. Ball in towards Coakland, and he scored. It's 2-1 Histon here. Um, we need to do something really quickly. Let's get on counter, actually. And we're now 2-1 up with three minutes to go. And as it stands, we're once again moving up into second place, ahead of Bedford on goal. If it's a great ball over the, by Reed, and Soakland is there. Reed's had a fantastic game with a goal and assist now, so... Absolutely fantastic that these guys have managed to step up without the uh, striker options that we've had. But it looks like we're going to have an immediate instant highlight here, and this is not good. Please don't tell me they're going to score straight away like they did last time. Worked so hard to get the goal there, and Conor Ohm just boots up the field. Well done. Here's Soklan to Haim. If we get another goal, that would be absolutely fantastic. But he's giving it away towards Sherlock. And here's Roach. He's got a chance to put coming on goal. Closing down on goal, but Conor Owen is equal to the task, and it's still 2-1, and it's a corner in towards, but in towards Sherlock, but Conor Owen again, commanding his area. He's had a pretty good game at 6.8, so he didn't, wasn't really at fault for the penalty, it wasn't his fault, but it looks like we are going to win the game. Yes, we have. What a result there. A 2-1 victory against Bedford, who are close to us in the table, and we're now ahead of us. Fantastic result by, by the team. Considering the uh, the injuries that we've ha that we've had, as I mentioned before, look at that eight shots, five on target. So quite clinical with the shots that we managed to get there. I think Bedford might feel robbed of these of a, an actual point there, or even two point, or even three points in total. But they will probably deserve the point out of that, considering their stats. But we'll take that. We'll take a l ugly three point smash and grab there, given our circumstances, and we can now move on into the away match against AFC Dunstable with some good form. I was going to do the Barton Rovers game, but because of the fact that this game in the middle actually um, meant that those those games weren't to get back-to-back, to back, I'm going to actually end the episode, I think, around, around about there. I'm going to take... Actually, no, I'm going to show you um, uh, Reese Norton's stats because he's a new, relatively new player because he's I promoted him up from the uh, youth squad. Oh, and as you can see... Oh, that's cool. As you can see, we've got the... Um, the key matches thing on the uh, division, as you can see, we've now moved up into officially moved up into second place. They're ahead of Bedford. We're now five points clear of the um, the player or the 
team in sixth, which is currently Aylesbury United, which is also good. Which is good. Uh, Reed is on form there. One goal, one assist, at a rating of 8.3. Fantastic. And then we've got someone looking at. Oh, don't, don't have to worry about that. But let's actually go to the squad, and I wanted to show you um, Reese Norton here, youth prospect again. Um, if we can, if the uh, player can load up, please. Right, here we go. As you can see, potential to want to be one of the best players at the club. As you can see, 11 heading, 12 marking. Tackling could be, could do with some work. Decision at 11, aggression 12. Yes, there's a couple of stats which could definitely improve. But I guess that's going to help with game time. And I think because of the fact that he is he's currently the fourth best centre-back on the actual thing. So I might actually use him ahead of someone like Mike Williams now. Considering that he, I think he's, is he the same age as Williams? No, no, uh, Reese Norton's actually younger. So... I am going to use Reese Norton now as a backup alongside Max York for Luke Harding and Alex Ingram. So that's going to be the uh, end of the episode today. I'm actually going to th I need to decide what's going to be the next match here. As you can see, we've got quite a few uh, interesting games. I mean, Aylesby United's there, but it's only three, a couple of games away. I might actually do the Marlow game on New Year's Eve. That might be a good idea, and then we can, you guys can then say anything with regards to uh, January transfers. Who should we be looking out for? And also uh, gives me a good idea. Oh, give me a good um, number of games, number of league games to get through. Because now we're out of all the cup competitions. The league is all we're focusing on. So I think that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's eight matches before the next game against Marlow. So if, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, dramatic ending to that episode. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Also comment to see if there's anything I can do to improve the overall uh, series. And I'll see you guys in the next episode, which will be the home match against Marlowe. So until then, see you later.